Welcome to Inside Healthcare. More than 100,000 people in America have died from an opiate overdose. Sadly, one of them is Josiah Kautz. His parents, Maria and Jason Kautz, are now sharing their story in a new original documentary by Emmy Award winning filmmaker Joe Carlini. Joining us, we're very pleased to have with us in the TV studios are Josiah's mom and dad, Maria and Jason. And then also joining us is Joe Carlini, the filmmaker. And you're here to tell us a little bit about your incredible son and why what happened to you you said can happen to any family so really appreciate you taking time to be with us to share your story so Josiah was your oldest of he your was. children yes tell us a little bit about him he was our oldest son he from the time he was very young in fact I'll just tell you at one years of age he was completely potty trained day and night he was very smart, straight-A student. He was a jock. He played all sports. Um, very, very bright, made great decisions. Never worried about him one day in our life. Even as a teenager, he was an excellent, excellent student, excellent son. Um, Jason has always been in politics. We come from a family who really cares. We were involved in our community and just living the American dream, honestly, raising our family. So you said if it could happen to you, what happened to your son could happen, and to your family can happen to anyone. What did happen to Josiah, if you can share that with us? Sure, so at the age of 18, he graduated high school, and he graduated with honors, and he was off to college. And he was a soccer player, so he was going to be a walk-on on a college team. So we procured a apartment for him in, in Mesa, and he started his year off of college. And again, just with all the, the brightest dreams in the world, bright future in front of him. And about three months after he started college, we had a report that he was in trouble. Um, of course, we didn't believe it because we, you know, there was no way our son was going to be in trouble in any way. We headed over to Mesa it, into his apartment and the first scene that I have ever experienced of anyone on drugs as we walked into his apartment that had been fully furnished by his dad and I, and it was completely empty. You had to be shocked and stunned. <clears throat> Very shocked. That this was your son. <clears throat> yeah. No, we, we <clears throat> didn't even expect any of that. We, you know, we, we thought that, uh, you know, come from a pretty decent home. We thought that he was going to, you know, succeed and just go on into whatever career he ever wanted to do. Um, Cause you could tell he, he wasn't, wasn't interested in construction and so he wanted to uh, spread his wings and and so yeah that's <clears throat> one of the re big reasons why we decided uh, to to uh, to do this documentary film was because you know we're the of the people that we don't just lift up the rug and sweep everything underneath it um, our lives are exposed because I'm in, the, I'm in the public eye You're and the mayor uh, of your town I'm the mayor of our city yes and so People are constantly watching us, and so um, I always wanted to make sure that everybody knew the truth about us and stuff, and, and it, it hurts, it hurts, but uh, Maria received that phone call from, from the director. Wow, and then it, it was a long journey, right? It, it never ended. So we showed up at his apartment, and it was completely empty, and don't worry, mom and dad are here to save the day. Because uh, remember, we knew nothing about drugs. And so we took him home and I told him, you know, a brief couple weeks and just, just to get your head back on straight and you'll be right back to college. And five years later, we found him dead in his bedroom. It never quite turned around. He went to a couple rehabilitation centers. Um, he ended up doing very well at his third or fourth one. And he met a girl that was from France, and he got married and moved abroad. And drugs were always at the forefront, even of his marriage. And he got clean, but by then it was his marriage was over, and he moved home. And four short months later, he was he was dead. I, I just can't imagine. I can't imagine what you and your family have gone through, and and they are. Many of the family members have talked in the, in the documentary. Joe, why don't you tell us about the, the documentary itself and why you decided to take on the, the documentary film? Sure. I think for me, I was in between projects and um, found out about their story. And to me, Maria wrote 
a few articles in their, their local paper and her writing was so good and it reeled me in as a reader. And I think she was so open and honest and truthful of their experience and, and really kind of candid and blunt that I, I, I think some part of me, it drew me in as a storyteller that I was like, this could be a documentary. Initially, I pitched it as like a four month deal, ended up being a lot longer and it kept getting bigger. And, and you know, we've shot all over the country. Um, Chief Generator, who we actually spoke with earlier today, she was in the movie Heroin, which was nominated for an Oscar. Um, it's on Netflix. We have her whole fire department in the film and experts and why? kind because of throughout. They were a hotbed or the epicentic of Well, they the were kind of like. Crisis? They kind of considered it being like the, um, I don't know, the, what do you, would you describe it? Maybe not the, like the, where it kind of started from, but they called it kind of the cap, like the overdose capital of the country. So, yeah, just the project kept getting bigger. Um, her whole family, Maria, Maria and Jason's family, they, they were so honest with their experience with Josiah. And I think, you know, as a storyteller, um, I just, I really connected with how real it was and how much pain there was. And I think for me, that's what my job was, was to shed light on that. And the film holds nothing back. It really no. shows in depth, look at the opiate crisis from a family's perspective, from a community's perspective, from the country's perspective on what's happening. Right, and I think that's the thing that people need to realize. I think we've, we've kind of turned the corner on you know, the taboo talking about, you know, drugs and heroin and opiates. And I think a lot of people that are from nicer communities or better communities when it comes to like crime or things of that nature think it's not a problem. But I think the more naive you are, the more you're going to realize how much of a problem it is when it's at your front door. Do you feel like Josiah is opening this up to the world about what it's like and, and getting that message across? Absolutely. About the dangers of it? Absolutely. It, it definitely is. You know, when we very first found out that Josiah was on drugs, I hadn't personally known one other family that suffered from this. No one talked about it. And it was such a lonely spot to be in. And of course, once you get involved in it and realize the shame that people have to face, you under, I understand it, but that didn't stop us from, because we want to help others who don't know where to go, who have no idea who they can talk to, who, like Joe said, just sweep it under the carpet, that never helps because that's what ad addiction lives on that. Addiction lives on being hidden and being secret, whereas healing comes from connection and exposing and being in this together, locking arms with people and knowing that you're not alone being in the community. And you wrote about it in a book as well. I did, yes, yes I did. To share it, and that's one way that Joe learned about this, I believe, or yes. in the process. Yes. And then, Jason, what what would be your message to families out there that may be suffering for they have an um, opiate addiction in their family or them personally? What would you say to them? It's just <coughs> open communication. You know, you I it, to me, I think it's early education. I think that you you need to start yes. you need to start thinking that. It can happen to you. It can happen to your family, and so have that have that tough talk if you need to with your son or your daughter, um, and really get inside and and really <clears throat> just care and and just get with them and and open it up. I mean, we would have never. I we thought you just didn't do that kind of stuff, you know. And and um, so that was that's where I would try to pinpoint it right to the earliest education you can. And the, the, the film has been shown in Arizona, in California, in Minnesota. You have a special screening here this week in, in Minnesota at a school with two, four parents and students. Why was it important to bring that to students? I think ever, you know, even from the beginning of this whole process, I think we mentioned the idea of, you know, showing it at schools. You know, I mean, the film to me is still early on within where it can go and I think this was kind of the first school that's really kind of promoted by the high school I mean it's it's kind of students and and parents are allowed to come and it's a free screening and you know we're gonna have a Q&A after the screening and just inform people I feel like people need to be informed of the reality of of what what's going on with opiates with fentanyl with heroin you know how you know one night 
of a bad decision could lead to your life just spiraling out of control to where you know you end up dying and I think that's just where we are as a society the, you have to really accept where um, what this epidemic has been and where it's gone and, and I think the way you combat it and really kind of turn the corner is having an open dialogue and conversation and you know educating students at a young age and for us you know with Maria we we didn't help hold anything back I mean we we do show the overdose photos of Josiah which are pretty disturbing and I asked her are you sure you want to do this because it's very I mean it doesn't hold anything back it's very private it's very you know kind of for their family and and she said if we can save one life you know that's Absolutely. that's why we're doing this and to me those images are needed for the film because I think a student you know or a kid that's 14, 15 years old, they see these images, they're like, I don't want to be that person. I don't want that to be me. I don't want my family to go through this heartbreak. And I think that's really the ultimate goal of Josiah is to save lives. Final comment to our viewers? Say one life saved is worth it all. Absolutely. Really a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for taking time to be with us. So thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank you. Really Thanks. appreciate it. Up next, a local doctor has some advice for parents on kids and anxiety during the new school year, so stay with us.